Hello, friends. Steve Stockton here with you. Welcome to Listener Stories, a chilling series where we delve into the depths of the unknown through spine-tingling tales submitted by you, our listeners, from eerie encounters with the supernatural to inexplicable phenomena that defy all logic. Join us as we navigate the shadows of the human experience and explore the darkest corners of the imagination. Each episode promises to leave you on the edge of your seat, questioning what lurks in the darkness and what secrets lie hidden in the night. So dim the lights, settle in, and prepare yourself for a journey into the realm of the unexplained. Unsettling event I encountered in the woods of North Idaho. I grew up in the rural woods of the Midwest. My grandparents had a cabin on 160 acres in the Ozarks, and my family home was in the woods of Ohio. I now live out west in a large city with my husband and kids, but his family has a cabin in northern Idaho where we spend a lot of time in the summer. That's where this all took place. So when I say I know the woods, I really do. This happened a few years ago, in the middle of summer. We had arrived at the cabin, only to realize my husband somehow had totally spaced and forgot to pack my hiking boots. I was livid, because all I had on were cheap flip-flops, and I'd been so, so looking forward to hiking that weekend. It kind of put a sour mood to the evening, and we settled in. The cabin isn't much, and though in the woods, it's part of a community or a cluster of other cabins. The one perk to ours is that it's right against a large field surrounded by woods. It's private property, and there's some weird stories in history with the family that owns it, but that field is mostly abandoned. We have a four-foot barbed wire fence that runs the length of the field to separate our land from that. It's not too far from the cabin, I'd say maybe 20 feet from our porch to the fence line. That night after dinner, I made up the air mattresses for the kids, folded out the sofa bed for us. Soon everyone else was asleep, but since I have horrible insomnia, I was still up around 2 a.m. reading my Kindle and sipping wine when I heard the most god-awful noise. I slipped my flip-flops on and poked my head out the front door. There was a sound coming from the field. I stepped out onto the porch to listen more intently. It's the sound of a coyote being hurt. At first I thought possibly it was stuck in a trap, and I got so, so angry. My husband's family are known for our dogs, and the idea someone was trapping near us made me so angry. I cannot tell you how or why, but every cell in my body was screaming for me to help it. I ran inside to get a flashlight. It was a new moon, so zero light outside and once again found myself upset I didn't have my boots. There was no way I was going to make it even to the fence line in my flip-flops. Between the woods and terrain, it was happening near the corner of our property that can best be called a trash heap. An abandoned camper, a wood pile, metal drums for burning, etc. I had no idea what I could even do to help, but I just so badly felt like I had to do something. So, I went back outside, and all I could do was listen. The more I listened, the more I realized it was being attacked by something. And that's when the hair on my neck stood up. I realized everything was dead quiet. I have never before or after heard the woods like that. Whatever was attacking the coyote was also doing it silently. No snarl, no bark, or yip no growl. And as I stood there frozen and listening, I heard the final noises as the coyote died. I had tears in my eyes because it was such an awful sound. As soon as it died, I was hit with the force of the sounds around me. Suddenly the neighbor's dogs were howling and barking. The bugs and crickets started up. It was like a switch had been flipped. It went from no sound to all the sounds in the blink of an eye. And that's when I heard the footsteps. Whatever had attacked the coyote 
was suddenly on our side of the fence. It was walking along the fence line, and it clearly was bipedal. I cannot stress this enough. I grew up in the woods. Humans and animals sound different, and this sounded human. It was clearly walking on two legs. I kept staring along the line, trying to see whatever it was. But as the footsteps grew closer to the middle of the property, and I still couldn't see anything, I panicked and ran quickly back into the cabin. I locked the door and grabbed a hatchet and woke my husband up. I couldn't believe he was able to sleep through everything. He hadn't heard a thing. The next morning, we went directly to where I told him the sound was coming from, the attack, but couldn't see anything. Though the field at that time of year is like four foot tall grass, and we didn't expect to see anything, and I was not about to hop the fence to go looking for trouble. I will say I had never been so thankful to not have had boots that weekend, because without a doubt, I would have tried to hop that fence that night. I just know I would have. Something in me was screaming out to make it stop. Anyway, I'm sure this is rambling a bit, but I felt so alone on this for years. My husband believes me, but, I mean, we have no logical answers. Thank you. Anonymous. My Story of Little People My story occurred in Jedito, Arizona. This incident occurred during the summer of 1983 when I was 11 years old. I remember I was 11 years old because that's the summer my father quit racing horses and started staying home. So this particular evening, I went for a walk with my siblings and my two dogs. My dogs would always be way ahead of us in the woods somewhere chasing squirrels or something. I was ahead of everyone too, trying to beat them to the hill. Right before the hill, there is an old house down in a little valley. As I was walking past the old house, I saw something move out of my peripheral vision to my right. As I looked to my right, down at the ground, I saw small people, about ten of them, maybe more. They all stopped in their tracks and stared at me in shock. I was in shock, too, about what I just came upon. I remember they were about a foot tall, with black short hair, maybe shoulder-length and bushy. They were all naked, no clothes on, but they had no private parts, so I don't know if they were all males. Two of them were carrying a can, which was a spam can. One was in front, and the other was in back, carrying the back end of the can. Those were the ones I spotted first, and then I saw the rest. They all were carrying something in their hands. They all had long, skinny arms and long, skinny legs. As I started walking towards them, they all dropped what they had in their hands and ran together toward a single area by a big sage bush. One by one, they all sank into the ground. I stopped in my tracks, too, when I saw them going into the ground. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. When they had all gone into the ground, I ran to the same area and started digging. I dug out sand about a foot deep, but I couldn't find anything. That particular area is sandy because the water runs through there when it rains. As my siblings walked up to me and asked what I was doing, I told them what I'd just seen and I showed them the small footprints and what they'd left behind. I went back there every day for the whole summer, but I never saw them again. I even sat on a big boulder nearby and watched if they would come out. Never did. My family still owns that land, so when I go there, which is once in a great while, I go by and check for footprints. Nothing yet. I will never forget what I saw that day. I'm glad I got to experience something so incredible like that. I'm glad my dogs never came upon them because I don't know what would have happened. I've never told my story to anyone before. Only my parents, my siblings, my husband, and my kids know about my experience. My father told me to stay away from them, as they're a part of Mother Earth, too. 
I don't remember what he calls them. He said it in either Spanish or Navajo, so I don't remember. Thank you for allowing me to share my story. Rene. Yosemite Half Dome. This happened around August of 2019. I'm not sure what we experienced or if there was anything odd about it, but whatever. It's also a bit of a long story. Sorry about that. So, this was a hike up to Half Dome. We had a campground about a 20 minute drive away from the trailhead, and the group was composed of me, an 18 year old male, my uncle, a 32 year old male, and my uncle's friend, whom I'll call D. There were two girls with us, but they aren't relevant to the story. My uncle and his friend are both Christian, so there were no substances consumed that could induce the feelings I will be talking about. We get to our campsite, set up camp, and go to sleep after eating. We plan to wake up at 4 a.m. and start the hike by 4.30. I randomly wake up at 3.30 a.m., like completely wide awake, and look out of my hammock, and I remember feeling this odd feeling, as if I was woken up by something. And I remember looking out at the moonlit scene. The moon was very bright for some reason, and thinking to myself, it looks like a dream. I lay back in the hammock but can't go to sleep and end up waking up my uncle and friend at 3.50 a.m. My uncle asks me, were you walking around at night? This is important. And I say no and ask why. He says he woke up for some reason and could hear someone walking around. Not like an animal, but a person. I say, huh, weird. And we brush it off. We get to the trailhead around 4.30 a.m. As everyone is unloading from the car, he says he's going to use the bathroom, which there are a couple of before the trailhead. I walk behind him for some time before falling behind and waiting for my uncle, who forgot something in the car. The short, straight road from the parking lot runs directly into a T intersection with a road to the trailhead, and the bathroom is directly across from the intersection through a field a little ways. Those who have been there know what I'm talking about. We get to the intersection and wait for D to come out of the bathroom. We wait about 10 minutes before I go and check the bathroom, and he isn't there. I get back to my uncle and tell him that. He says, weird, maybe he went back to the car or something. We decide to wait a little bit more. By 5.10, we were beginning to worry. My uncle goes to check the car while I wait at the intersection to make sure we don't miss him if he went down the road away from the trailhead. My uncle returns, says he isn't there either. We decide maybe he went up to the trailhead without us for some reason and walk up there in about 10 minutes. He isn't there either. We're kind of baffled now because there are no other logical places he would go. I decide to run back and check the car in the bathroom again. I meet him halfway before I get to the intersection. He's sweaty and disheveled with a weird look in his eyes. I say, where have you been? He says that he went to the bathroom and when he got back to the intersection that we weren't there. And that he just assumed we went to the trailhead and started walking and then he met me. I say, what do you mean? We waited at the intersection for over half an hour, checked at the car, bathroom and trailhead and you weren't there. He says, well, I don't know. I went to the bathroom. He then asks me where my uncle is. I say, at the trailhead. And he asks me again. And I tell him again. And note that it was weird that he asked me twice. As we're crossing the bridge to the trailhead, he sees a light off on the riverbank and exclaims, oh, maybe that's him. And I just look at him and keep walking. I thought his behavior was very strange, like he wasn't thinking straight. We finally get on with the hike, and it goes by as normal, except that we seem to keep losing things, such as my uncle's small red flashlight, one of the girl's gloves, a water bottle, etc. It's like we just simply forgot about the items and couldn't remember where we could have left them. 
On the way back, it got dark, and we turned on our flashlights. And as we near the end of the hike, after the two waterfalls, it begins to seem if we've been walking far too long. My uncle confirms this, asking me, doesn't it seem like it's taking way longer to get back? I say, yeah, but I was just thinking that. We keep walking, but it still seems like we're not making any progress. I've been on that trail many times. As I was walking, I couldn't spot any familiar landmarks. It was weird. There was this odd feeling in the air. Sort of a slight menacing feeling. It's hard to describe. I remember thinking, it feels like the woods are alive. We remarked three more times about how long the hike is taking and began to laugh at it because it felt so ridiculous. After a bit, we finally and suddenly find ourselves on the final stretch and make it back to the car. Now all this seemed odd at the time, but I just brushed it off. Only realized how weird those events felt after we got home and my aunt asked my uncle, were you camping? And he says, yeah, how did you know? As we didn't tell them we were going since it was kind of last minute. She says that she had an odd dream where she saw my uncle in a tent in a forest and someone is outside of his tent. She says she couldn't see who it was but knew there was a presence there. She says she woke up around 3 a.m. and had the strong urge to pray for him, and she did. My uncle kind of looks at me after that like, are you hearing this shit? Thank you for allowing me to share my story. Tim. Strange Experience in Starved Rock State Park, Illinois. I had a very strange experience 12 years ago in Starved Rock State Park, Illinois. It was so bizarre at the time, I never discussed it. I began reading the missing 411 stories a few weeks ago and realized what I encountered fits into the missing 411 profile. Additionally, since many of the missing 411 stories border on the unexplainable and bizarre, I feel what I encountered was not unique that it was part of an actual phenomenon. Here's my story. I was visiting my girlfriend in Chicago. On a sunny and calm winter day, we decided to go for a hike at Starved Rock State Park. I'm an avid hiker, and being on leave from Iraq, I wanted to take in some cool, fresh air. We hiked the park for several hours. In late afternoon, we started heading back to the car. About a half mile away from the parking lot, we came into an area where tree branches were broken and pulled towards or over the trail. Most of the branches were broken high up, I'd say eight feet and more off the ground. I lived in Washington State before going to Iraq and knew something of Sasquatch areas. So I told the girlfriend it looked like a squatch area due to the branches broken off up high and pulled over the trail. That's about the time things started to get strange. Soon after mentioning this, I felt like someone was staring at me. It's like if you go in a room with a lot of people and someone is focused on you, you get an uneasy feeling and can tell you're being watched. It was like this, but stronger. I started to look around to see who was watching me. It was winter and the forest was visible hundreds of feet in all directions. There was a group of walkers several hundred feet behind us and no one in front of us, but I saw no one staring at me. As we passed through the Squatch area, I began to have the feeling someone was behind me, following us. I looked around and listened, but saw and heard nothing. There was just people 400 feet or so back on the trail, and they were talking amongst themselves. They weren't looking our way. The sense of someone being behind me was persistent, so I kept looking behind me, I'd say at least twice a minute, but there was just the group way back there. The feeling of being watched is one thing, but feeling like someone is close behind you is something else. It is more disturbing. I told the girlfriend to go further in front of me and let her go about 20 feet in front because I had a strong sensation of a nearby presence just behind us. 
So I turned around not more than 30 seconds since the last time I looked back, and there's this woman there. She was walking, but coming up on me fast. There was something way off about her speed. She was walking when I spotted her, but her speed was much faster than her gait. It was as if she were on a people mover escalator like in an airport. She was coming up fast and was, I'd say, no more than 15 or 20 feet behind me when I saw her. I was rather alarmed and glared at her. She stopped when our eyes met. I gave her a look like, WTF are you doing coming upon me like that? We stood there staring at each other. Neither of us moved. She had her head cocked back to her left and looked at me from the corner of her eyes in a slightly alarmed, you caught me type of look. She was completely normal looking, like a local Chicago lady, late 50s, wearing a bright red winter coat, gloves, slacks, etc. In hindsight, there are a few other things besides her speed which stand out. The first thing is there was no sound, no footsteps, no rustling in the woods, nothing to tell me to turn around other than the strong sense of something behind me, which I'd had for a bit. At the speed she was moving, she would have had to have been running hard, but I heard no footsteps. She was not breathing hard and her mouth was closed. Her gait was a walking gait. She was not running. However, she was moving towards me at a running speed. I mean fast. When she stopped, I'd say she was less than 20 feet from me. At the speed she was moving, in one or two seconds, she'd have been on me. The next thing that stands out is her features. She had no distinguishing features. None in her hair, skin, or clothing. No shadowing or skin hues, dimples, etc. As a former Army criminal investigator, I know to look for distinctive markings on people in clothing. There were none. I'd estimate her height at 5 foot 10 inches. Her clothes were of uniform coloring and indistinct. It was like she just stepped out of a department store. Her bright red coat was pristine with a uniform hue to it. There wasn't even shading, which there should have been given the clear sky and low sun. After staring at each other for I'd say 5 to 10 seconds, I felt like I got my point across, so I turned around and continued walking. The girlfriend had not noticed anything and had continued walking. I took about three steps and realized there was no way she could have come up from that group in the 30 or so seconds since I'd last looked back. There was also nowhere to come from on either side. Visibility at that point was hundreds of feet all around. I said to myself, no way, and spun back around. She was gone, simply vanished. I checked the group behind us and no one had a red coat on or was looking at us. There was no one else around and there had been no sounds other than my footfalls. The woman just vanished. From that point, it took us about 10 minutes to reach the car. For the remainder of the walk, I did not feel like I was being stared at or followed. I have never been back to Starved Rock State Park and have no intention of going back. The whole thing was bizarre. How was I supposed to tell anyone about that? So I never have. My mental state was fine. I have a high IQ and a 20 year career in a STEM field following army service. At the time I was working a DOD IT contract in Iraq. I was well rested and relaxed being on vacation with the girlfriend. There were no drugs or alcohol involved. These are strictly prohibited in my line of work and were grounds for immediate termination under MNFI's G01, which I was subject to at the time. I've carried this experience around for 12 plus years, being unable to talk about it because it was so exceptional and unexplainable. It's a relief to read similar stories of unusual encounters and disappearances. After reading many missing 411 accounts and the profile of disappearances, I believe I narrowly averted being snatched by whatever that thing was. I do not think it was the woman I saw. I think it was something different which I could not see. Thank you. Anonymous. Eerie Footsteps Behind Us When I was around 12 years old, my girlfriend and I went with my parents to an isolated cabin 
that was only accessible by boat in northern Ontario, Canada, near my dad's reservation called Serpent River. Anyway, my brother was swimming in the lake, so my girlfriend and I decided to hike up a hill that ended up being quite steep with cedar trees all around us. So as we were making our way up, we decided to sit down and take a rest as the ground was covered in cedar needles and quite comfortable. As we were sitting there, we were chatting because we could see my brother swimming in the lake. From quite up high on the hill we climbed, then all of a sudden the ground was shaking underneath our butts like something so heavy was running behind us. It scared the daylights out of both of us and we hightailed it down that hill. We did look behind us, but we could only feel it and could not see anything. To this day, I've always wondered what it could be. We thought the only possible thing that could make the ground vibrate like that might be a moose. But then again, I just couldn't see how or why a moose would be so high up on a hillside with rocks and cedar trees. It still perplexes me to this day. Anonymous Unexplained Invisible or cloaked being slash humanoid. When I was about five years old, I was playing by the edge of the woods behind my grandmother's house. I played there often, and my grandmother just kept an eye on me from the kitchen or living room because the house had huge windows that faced the woods. She would come out every once in a while just to see what I was up to. I was obsessed with digging in the dirt and collecting unusual rocks and arrowheads that littered the land where my grandmother lived. I should mention this is Midwest Illinois, not too far from Cahokia Mounds, so finding arrowheads was actually not that uncommon. Anyway, that day, I remember picking out a spot to dig. I'd been out there for quite a while because I remember I had a pretty decent sized hole going when something caught my eye up in the tree that I was next to. I almost don't know how to explain it, but it looked like almost a heat wave coming off the branch of the tree. It was fall. I remember this because I had my pink jacket on and remember thinking my mom was going to be pissed because I had dirt around the bottom of the arms from digging. I also remember there being a lot of leaves on the ground. Anyway, I'm staring at this heat wave and realize it has a human shape. So here I am, five years old, and wondering why there's an invisible man on the tree. I remember feeling scared, but unsure what to do. Then it started moving and making a faint clicking sound. This is about the time that I decided that I was not supposed to be seeing this, and I hightailed it back to the house. My grandmother saw I was pretty shaken, and I remember telling her that I just saw an angel. In my five-year-old mind, I didn't know what else it could be. I'd never heard of aliens or ghosts or monsters, so to me it had to be an angel because that's all my little mind could think of. Fast forward to when I was about 12 years old. By this time, the encounter was way out of my mind. I loved watching action and sci-fi movies. My dad rented a movie called Predator. I'm watching it with him, and the first time you see the Predator, invisible slash cloaked, I about shit my pants. All the memories from that day digging in the dirt came flooding back. I even asked my dad if Predator was real, or if he knew of anyone or any animal that had cloaking ability that I didn't know about. He told me it was all fake. It wasn't like it is today, where I could just Google it. I had no access to the internet, so again, I just put it out of my mind. Again, fast forward to about the year 2004. I'm grown now. I have three small children. I just went through a separation from my husband. I moved to the next town over to an apartment with my kids. These apartments are all one-level duplexes with there being five buildings. I'm at the very last apartment of the last building. The apartments are considered in town, but are on the outskirts. There's a deep ditch that runs behind the buildings with a chain-link fence that separates the backyard from the ditch. There's about six or seven trees on our side of the fence. And if you follow the ditch a little bit, you hit a small forest that eventually leads to the country with a larger forest and farmland. I'm a smoker, but would not smoke in the apartment because of the kids, so I often went out to the back porch. One night I was up late doing laundry and stuff after the kids went to bed. 
I decided to take a smoke break before I myself went to sleep. So I'm back there on the porch and I start hearing this faint clicking sound. I immediately looked to the ditch because I'd seen a groundhog out there a few days before and thought perhaps he was out there again. The yard is faintly lit from the outside light that's by the playground that is to the right of my back porch. I didn't turn on my porch light. I didn't normally if I was just going out for a quick smoke. I didn't see any groundhog or movement from the ditch, so I go back to smoking my cigarette. The faint clicking sound keeps happening, and a slight shift of movement makes me look up into the tree to the left of my porch. It's there. The same invisible thing I'd seen when I was five. It's like a distortion and in a humanoid shape. It's crouched down on the branch with an arm out holding onto the trunk of the tree. I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this happening? Has it come to kill me from me seeing it all those years ago? All I could think about was my kids in the apartment sleeping. I ran in and slammed and locked the door. I ran to the kids' room and made sure all the windows were locked. Then I just turned out the lights in the living room and stared out the blinds at the tree to see if I could catch another glimpse of it. I sat there for a good ten minutes and couldn't see anything. I began to think I was just tired and my mind was playing tricks on me. Just as I was finally talking myself down, a neighbor's dog comes running across the yard and starts barking at the tree at the same branch that I'd seen this predator thing on. That pretty much freaked me out because this dog was not a barker. I've actually never heard him bark at anything, even at the groundhog that had been hanging out at the ditch. This barking went on for a few minutes until I hear the neighbor lady who owns the dog call him back inside. The dog reluctantly turned to go back home, stopping every few feet to look back at the branch of the tree until he was out of my sight. I didn't sleep that night and have never seen anything like it again. I don't know what to think of it. I'm a grown woman. I have kids and a good career. I just want to know if anyone else has ever had an experience like this. I know what I saw, believe it or not. Also, just a strange little side note about my obsession with digging when I was younger, I had an uncanny ability to just know where to dig for stuff. Like I said, I used to dig up arrowheads and unusual rocks and geodes all the time. It was kind of strange. I remember this one time I was fishing with my dad, and when we got back to the camp, I just started randomly digging in a meadow off to the side of the camp. I dug up a whole bunch of marbles. It was weird. They were all pretty deep, too. My dad was pretty amazed by it. Thanks for taking the time to read this. Anonymous. I'm not sure what happened to me in the woods. I don't know if this is the same kind of stuff, but someone said I should post this here. Okay, so I know this is going to sound crazy, and honestly... I've spent a long time reading stories on here and called BS on stories half as crazy as what happened to me. I'm no writer, so I apologize in advance if I don't explain this well. I love creepy stuff and spend a lot of time listening to stories on YouTube and reading them here and various other places. A friend of mine came to me because she knows I love stuff like this and told me she had a strange experience the other night with her boyfriend where she parked near a woods on the edge of town and just as they were about to start fooling around, something made a creepy giggling noise from the woods. Her boyfriend got out and threw stones into the woods, thinking someone was playing a prank or something. She said he shined his phone light into the woods, and they both saw what looked like tiny people scattering back into the woods. I asked how tiny. She said about the size of her dog, which is a little white fluffy thing. I'm not sure what the type is, but they're really small dogs. I drove up to the woods that night to check it out and parked near where she said she parked, but didn't hear anything. So after a while, I got out of the car and went into the woods to look around. I didn't want to go far in, and I swear I took less than 20 steps into the woods when I heard a laugh. It sounded like a little girl, but off. I'm not really sure how to explain it but I spun around and pointed my torch to where it had come from, and there was nothing there. Then, as I was looking around for what had made the sound, I realized I was really far into the woods, 
like seriously far in them, and I couldn't see my car or even the road. I know I hadn't walked that far. I was confused as hell, and when I went to head back the way I came from, I wasn't even on a path. I weirdly didn't panic, though I remember being what I would call drunk calm. Like when someone kicks off a problem in a bar, but you've had a few, so you just have no reaction to it. Like part of you knows you should be reacting, but you're just not. I just looked around and started walking in what I felt was the right direction, but the more I walked, I felt like I was dazed, and I kept thinking it was because it was so hot. It was pretty late at night, so it shouldn't have been. But I felt like I was on a beach on holiday somewhere, and I just kept thinking, I need to cool down to clear my head. So I started stripping. I'm seriously not the kind of girl who just strips off, by the way. Like, I'm not shy, but I don't do stuff like that. But my head was just fuzzy, and I was convinced I'd feel better if I took everything off, and I was just dropping everything as I walked. I even dropped my torch, as I just felt like my eyes would see better without it. I don't fully remember what was going on after that. I felt like I was walking for ages, like everything just felt like a dream, but I felt comfortable. Even though I was naked, I still felt like it was really warm. I don't know where I was, but I remember finding a small pond and trying to cool off by splashing the water over my head and then sitting on the edge and dangling my feet in the water. It felt deep, like I was on the edge of a pool like it was just a straight edge going down, even though it looked like it was a little more than a large puddle. I remember it being really nice and cold when I felt a hand around my ankle, and then a second one around the other. Everything still just felt normal, though, like I was thinking I should slide forward and lower myself in the water because it was so nice and cool. Like even trying to remember it all as much as I'm freaked out feels like just such a peaceful memory. I could feel the hands around my ankles, and I started laughing as something started tickling my feet. I'm not sure how long this went on for, but in my memory, it feels like it was happening for hours. I was just giggling and thinking about getting all the way into the water. I'm not sure what broke me from my daze, but I feel like someone else was there who said something to me. I remember pulling my feet out of the water, the hands letting go without a fight, and then turning around and walking away. Everything is blank, though, after I start walking away. The next thing I remember is being back in my car, suddenly very, very uncomfortable about being naked and starting to panic. I seriously have considered going back in the woods to find my clothes, but thankfully decided against it, as I imagined the few awkward moments getting home were better than risking the woods again. I have no idea what to think about what happened, and I'm pretty sure no one is going to believe me, but I had to tell people about this. I mean, has anyone experienced things like this before? Thank you, Anonymous. Dogman or Unknown Cryptid Encounter My name's John, and I spent much of my childhood with my father, who taught me how to hunt and fish. We had land in Franklin County, which is the outskirts of Laurel, Indiana. My father built our home, and it was located just about 20 yards from the deep woods off Bulltown Road, which was named that because when the farmers would take their cattle to or from the market, that's the path they would travel. That's now our road. We fished for everything from bluegill to trout to bass, and the most fun, the infamous blue, channel and flathead catfish. Hunting was no different, from squirrel, rabbits, to deer. My dad also showed me how to noodle for snapping turtles, although I never really had the nerve for that. My best times were with him showing me what ginseng, bloodroot, and rhubarb all looked like. I would go on those adventures, although not having much luck finding them as I did the morel mushrooms. I've spent more days and nights in the woods, at riverbanks and lakes, than I had ever had or wanted to in some city setting, and these places were my comfort zones, where I felt at peace, where I truly felt alive and closest to my creator, and never ever had I experienced anything like what I had in this January of 2010. 
It was early when I got up and ready to head out squirrel hunting off some property over by my uncle's house, which is really the same romping grounds I ran with when I was just a kid out hunting with my pop. I was going to use my 22 Marlin, which was a good rifle with a casco scope instead of a shotgun, because to me, there was nothing worse than picking out buckshot when you're trying to enjoy a hot plate of fried mushrooms and biscuits with squirrel gravy. I got out in the general area of where I wanted to begin my hunt and found a nice hickory to lean up against, and just as I usually do, I leaned back, got really comfortable, and began to rest my eyes. Catch a nap, I figured really quick, before I get serious with squirrel hunting. So I listened for about five minutes to see if I heard them cut in this direction, or that which a squirrel on a cut is what we call them chewing and breaking open hickory and walnut. Just as my usual routine, I fell asleep. I remember when I woke, it was as if I was startled awake, like if someone had clapped loudly to get your attention next to your face. I opened my eyes and was wondering, did I actually hear that, or was that just in my head? I looked up and straight ahead of me and saw something duck down behind a bramble bush that was about six to seven feet tall and about 50 yards out from me. Again, I wondered, am I saying things as well as hearing them? Now, I grew up hearing aunts and uncles, cousins, and other trusted people telling stories of UFOs. No close encounters, just lights in the sky. And as for Bigfoot, Arian and the Hendersons came out when I was nine in 1987, and it was something I thought, sure, I can bite on that. This is me as a child thinking the earth was much bigger than it actually is. The endless redwood forest and the Amazon with Tarzan and the tribes that have never seen civilized man. That's where these creatures roamed. But what I saw, this was something out of a Hollywood movie. I couldn't see very well still. The sun hadn't quite came up over the horizon. As for everything going silent, I was used to that because the birds were barely even awake at this hour. I took my gun and thinking, I'm about to catch someone trespassing on the land. I moved the scope up to my left eye and began to scan the width of the briar bush, which was about 10 to 15 feet, followed by a huge oak tree that ran parallel with the bush. I couldn't make anything out. It all blended in until I made out a sharply pointed ear. At first, I thought it was a bobcat because of the tassel of hair that was protruding out of the ear. But as my eyes finally focused in more and trying to decipher what was just bush and leaves to what was hair and facial features, when I saw an eye on the right side of his face looking at me, it registered to me there's no branches or limbs for any animal such as a bobcat or coyote to be able to appear that's positioning itself upright and which I saw when I first opened my eyes. I know the moment when I was looking at something I'd never seen before, because it felt like a bucket of cold water had been dumped over my head, and almost simultaneously, my teeth began to chatter. At that moment, I knew what I was looking at, and it was most definitely looking at me, had been standing upright. I lowered my rifle because there was no way on God's green earth that I was going to try to fire on this animal, for lack of anything I'd ever seen before, an upright canine. I didn't turn my back on him, but I slowly stood up. I was about maybe 150 yards into the woods. My mind was clear and focused, though. Just don't turn your back. And I walked slowly back to the road in my car. It never showed itself fully, and I'm glad. Since this has happened... I can't bring myself to hike in parks alone. I don't go fishing at night if the area is secluded, and those are just the long-lasting effects. I was about 32 when this happened, so it's been 10 years. I would damn near have panic attacks taking out the garbage. What I grew up loving to do with my father was now something I'm scared to do by myself. My dad had passed away in 1999 to a drunk driver and this encounter actually happened about 20 days after I lost my mom in 2010 to cancer. So I never had the opportunity for the two people I've been raised by out in the middle of the sticks for their theory on this. I do remember my father telling me one night he went out to the woodshed to grab a wheelbarrow load of firewood for the stove. I was young, so I didn't ask him to elaborate. 
but he said when he'd reached the shed, he heard a growl. A growl that made the hair on the back of his neck stand up. Put him in an utter rush to get back into the house. All he explained other than that was it sure wasn't a bobcat or a coyote. Looking back, I wish I would have pressed for more. Because this man noodle snapping turtles and was the only one the old bull of grandpa's would respect. In closing, I've only heard of Dogman in about the last five years. I haven't shared my story, but maybe with five people. And I'll only ever say, I saw something in the woods that I can't explain. Because that sounds much more rational than, you guys, I saw a werewolf. But I know I've come about as far as I can to recover from this encounter. With stories of aliens, Bigfoot, Dogman, and missing people, as well as a plethora of other cryptids I've not mentioned. But I can tell you now as I write, if you were to tell me you've seen something in the woods, describe it, can't explain it, I believe you. Because I've had my encounter too. Signed, John. Creature in the Woods This only happened several days ago, so my mind is still pondering what happened. My friend and I are avid outdoorsmen. Primitive camping, hiking, etc., etc. There's this local county park with a weird spooky history. Lots of people with odd sightings, menacing experiences, reportedly witchcraft. You get the idea. Well, we were hiking there and decided to follow a couple of game trails. We wanted to get away from the casual hikers and really explore the more unexplored parts of the forest. We'd gone several miles in and came to an area with a lower bush line. So our visibility was pretty good. All of a sudden, a storm of acorns erupted around us, with no wind to speak of. After this incident occurred, we had this overwhelming sense of being watched. We'd gone another several hundred yards when my friend calls out, What is that? And when I look towards what he's pointing at, we see this dark humanoid shape standing by a tree. It was around four feet tall, dark brown to black in color, and seemed to get highly agitated when I took notice of it. The only way to describe its movement was that it was lightly bouncing back and forth, giving off an aggressive vibe. Instinctively, we both pull out our knives. My friend also pulled out his axe. And we felt combat was inevitable. It kept watching us, emanating this aggressive energy. For some reason, we decided to move towards it. What happened next, I cannot explain. It simply disappeared. Once we both saw it disappear, we made a beeline to the tree it was at. We can be stupid brave. And there was no sign or sound of anything having been there. We look around, and nothing. There was no way for it to have gotten away without making a sign, or even making noise, as the brush wouldn't have allowed that. Sheathing our weapons, we stood there dumbstruck, not sure what had just happened. Thank you, Anonymous. Well, there you have it, our first batch of listener stories. Let us know what you think about these stories in the comments below, but please be respectful of the opinions of others. And if you have any strange stories you would like to see featured in an upcoming video, email them to nationalparkmysteriesyt at gmail.com. We're very interested in stories that detail encounters with ghosts, humanoids, cryptids, or any type of other unknown entity that is beyond explanation. Thanks again for listening, and please be sure to give us a like on the video and to share and subscribe for more strange stories. Meanwhile, be good to yourselves and each other. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time.